Let's talk about independent and mutually exclusive events. Two events are independent if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the occurrence of the other. So one example of this would be if one person flips a coin and another person rolls a die. Those two outcomes are going to occur independently and one does not affect the other. In another scenario, imagine a basketball player shooting free throws. If she begins to miss her shots, she might be getting in her head a little bit and actually have a higher probability of missing the next shot. Or if you're on a roll, for example, you make a bunch of shots in a row, you might also get in your head, or you might actually have a higher probability of making it. So typically, when we have something occurring over and over and over again, it's going to be independent so long as we return to the initial conditions. For example, if you draw a card from a deck, if you return that card to the deck and shuffle and draw again, your next draw will be independent of the first. However, if you don't return the card to the deck, in other words, sample without replacement, the deck is now different. Now there's only 51 cards, and there's a less likelihood of drawing that same card again because now there's only three of them left. So we'll talk more about independence and how to quantify it later, but that's the basic concept. Two events are mutually exclusive or disjoint if they have no outcomes in common. So going back to drawing from a deck of cards, um, we have black and red cards being mutually exclusive. But we don't have mutually exclusive events if we cross a suit, for example, with a card. Um, so an example of that is, um, think about diamonds and aces. And we can kind of visualize that in the homework. We've got a deck of cards here. So diamonds is at the bottom, aces is on the left. There's actually one card that is in common in both. So these are not disjoint. We do have some overlap there. And we can look at um, if we go back, we can look at some Venn diagrams and kind of see an example of that. So these two sets, or um, in this case, we can think of outcomes in the circles are disjoint. There's nothing in common. So think like black cards and red cards or, a or um, spades and diamonds, nothing overlapping. In this situation, we have an intersection, which is this kind of upside down U symbol these ones are not disjoint, or we could say not mutually exclusive. Going back to independent events, we don't really see that in this situation. Um, to quantify that or to visualize that, we'd have to look at it a little differently. Think about it this way, and we can kind of use, um, if we go back down, we can use this um, definition so what we get into here is conditional probability. In the first example, the first equation, we have probability of A given B equals probability of A. So what that means is if we're given a condition like B, but the probability of A remains the same, those are independent. Looking back at the deck of cards, let's go back to diamonds and aces. Now there, is four, there are four aces out of 52 cards, which simplifies 4 over 52 to 1 in 13. There's a 1 in 13 probability of drawing an ace. If we know that card is a diamond, there's still a 1 in 13 probability. So those two events, diamonds and aces, are independent. On the other hand, if we know that for example, a card is red, we have a higher probability of drawing a diamond. Or you could say if you know a card is a face card, you have a higher probability of drawing a king. We go from 1 in 13 to 3 out of 12 or uh, 4 out of 12 or a third of the face cards being kings. So that's a situation how we can quantify um, that that dependence or that change 
in probability versus um, keeping the same probability with a given condition.